by the time Mendel had did his parental course cross and then the F1 cross, he already had the basics of his theory. He figured out that you got a gene from mom and a gene from dad. Well, he called it factors, but he figured out you got these particles from mom and particles from dad to make you who you are. So he figured out that the genetic code was a double code. He also figured out that there was two ways of looking dominant. And homozygous dominant and the heterozygous look both look dominant. He also figured out that one gene sometimes overpowered the others. He figured out the pattern of segregation, which means those genes never blend, but they actually separate during the formation of gametes and then recombine during fertilization to form a new organism where the genes are still not blended, but separate from each other, creating what you are, so that you don't blend but cause a combination or a particle genetics. He had figured all of this out by now, and he did painstaking work in thousands of crosses like you saw on the, on the data that we showed you on the vi previous video but he didn't stop here now he wanted to find out if he actually had this right can i use this knowledge that i now have to predict the outcome of any cross that i try to do so he would took it a step further and try to do what we call the test cross now the test cross or the f2 cross was performed by mandel just to figure out if he had this right so let's see what he did basically he got uh, the children of the F2 generation, which are basically all the genotypes, and start crossing them together. Now, on the first cross, it's called the F2 dominance cross because basically what you're going to be doing is, is crossing the two children of the F2 generation that look dominant. So you're going to get big G, big G versus big G, little G. Now, you should know that both of those look what? Green. They should both look green because both have a dominant gene in it. And if the dominant gene is present, they're going to appear to be green. Now, what that means is that you're going to uh, have that. Now, let's do, do the alleles. You do meiosis and you find out that the first parent can donate one G or another G. The second parent can donate one big G or one little G. Now, you put down the Punnett square. And by the way, these are going to be my progenitors and they're members of the F2 generation or the result of an F1 cross. Now, you, you distribute down the Punnett square like usual and then you do fertilization and there you go. What do you get? The children on the left side are all big G, big G and the children on the right side are all big G, big G. So that's interesting. So what do you end up with? What genotypes show up? Big G, big G and little G, little G. Notice that little G, big, no sorry, big G, li, big, little G. Notice that the homozygous dominant and the heterozygous showed up, but the homozygous recessive did not show up. What is the ratio? Well, I have two homozygous dominants and two homozygous recessives, so I have a one-to-one -one ratio, or a 50-50 chance of getting either uh, for any child, any particular child. What about the phenotype? Well, all, everybody looks green. Green is the only look you have, and that means it's a 100% green look. What have you learned from this cross? You have learned that when you cross an offspring of a hybrid with the offspring of of the of a pure breed, we didn't do this cross yet. The first cross we did pure breed versus pure breed, they look the same. Exactly the same true breeders versus each other. It's a true breeding cross. On the second cross, the parental cross, we crossed two different types of true breeders. On the F1 cross, we crossed two hybrids which were the same this time i'm getting a hybrid versus a true breeder it's the first time i'm doing this so this is the the f2 crosses all f2 crosses is a hybrid versus a true breeder what ends up happening is that the children ratios match the ratios of the parents what i mean by that well you had one to one ratio of homozygous to heterozygous on the parents one parent was homozygous one parent was heterozygous what's the ratio of the children also one to one all the parents look green. How, what's the ratio of the kid children? All the children look green. So this is the cross where the parents match the children in terms of ratios. So that is what you learn with the F2 cross. Now the beautiful thing about this is that when Mendel did this, he did the, he did the prediction that that's what would happen. He predicted that if he took the hybrid and connected with the purebred, he would get this 50-50 ratio based on what he learned about it. And after many tests, that's what he got. And that's what he knew. I got this. I figured out how this works. And he uh, sent letters to a bunch of famous people, but no one really gave him credit until many years later when those letters were rediscovered. By the way, among those famous people were, were, was Darwin himself. Now, 
There's another version of this you can do. You can actually cross the same hybrid, all right, versus uh, the homozygous recessive uh, genotype. Now, this is what we call a task cross, and we're going to talk about it in a second about why we call it a task cross. Now, what we actually do here is that we, we're going to get something that looks what? Green with something that looks what? Yellow. This one will look yellow because it only has recessive genes. Now, that parent will give a G and a little g, and the other parent can only give little g's. You put that in the Punnett square, distribute uh, meiosis, then fertilization, boom, big G, little g, little g, little g, big G, little g, and you see the same pattern that happened before. Half the site is hybrid, half the site is homozygous, just like the parents were. So again, you have the, the ratio of the parents matched in the ratio of the children. And so you, you have the, the two genotypes that showed up, the recessive genotype and the heterozygous genotype, and you get a one-to-one -one ratio, 50-50, and you get uh, what look will you get? You would get, of course, both the green and the yellow look, and in this case, you're going to get, again, a 50-50 ratio, and notice that these ratios match the ratio of the parents. You had one green parent, one yellow parent. You get one-to-one -one ratio of, or 50-50 ratio, just like the parents and the children. You had one big G, little G, one little G, little G, 50-50. Again, in the children, you get a 50-50 ratio. So you notice that, again, the offspring ratios match the progenitor ratios, showing you that this is an F2 cross. Now, notice there's a difference between the test cross and the F2 dominance cross. In the, in the F2 and the test cross, you have two genotypes, phenotypes showing up. But in the F2 dominance cross, you actually get only one phenotype showing up, and that's the major difference between the two of them. Now, this is called a test cross because you can use it to discover the unknown genotype of a known uh, dominant phenotype. Oof, I know I lost some of you guys there. So let me see, let me explain what that means, okay? So, let's say you have, let's say you have a red flower, oh, sorry, a purple flower and a white flower. So, the purple is dominant. Now, here's the problem with that. You don't know the genotype, you cannot know the genotype of that flower. You can always know the genotype of a recessive flower because you know that the only way to look recessive is to either have only a recessive gene or to be paired with two recessive genes. So when you see a white flower and you know that's the recessive, you know that's going to be little p, little p. By the way, how do you know it's the recessive? Because when you duke it out with the other one, doing a parental cross, the, the other one always wins. And so you do a p cross and to find out which one is the dominant, right? And then you do an F1 cross to see that, that recessive coming back later on. But either way, you know that the white is recessive because you've done these things. But how do you know what's the genotype when you pick up a purple flower? You can't. Because when you look at that, it could be a big P or a big P, no, big P, big P, or a big P, little P, which means either the homozygous dominant or the heterozygous, either the true breeder or the hybrid will both look purple. So when you see that, how do you know what the genotype is? How do you find out the genetic code of something without knowing it? Well, now we have advanced techniques where you can do, actually do genetic analysis of the, of the specimen and find out exactly what the gene is. Now, back in Mendel's days, that would be impossible. What's the other thing you can do? You can do a self-cross, right? A self-pollination. Remember, if this is a, you can do a true breeder cross. If this is a true breeding thing, if you cross it with itself, it should always make what? Itself. So if you get the purple flower, and no matter how many times you try it, every time you cross it with itself, you always comes out purple. Even if you do it a thousand times, what that means is that that flower must be big P, big P. Right? But if it's a little P, little P, what are you really doing, right? If you if you self if you self cross with itself, what are you going to get? So let's let me show you that. Let me put that in the, in the screen for you. If you get a big P, big P, and you cross that, right, with a with a with a uh, big P, big P, basically what you're doing is a true beater cross, and so everyone is going to be like that, and you know that flower was big P, big P. But if that pot flower was a little P, little P. Right, and you, and you do that, what are you doing? Well, that's an F1 cross when you cross two hybrids. And what you're going to get is one big P, big P, one big P, little P. Or you're going to get a big P, little P as well, and you're going to get a little P, little P. And so what you, what you end up getting is you're going to get a 3 to 1 ratio, just like you get in an F1 cross, 
if you do this. So the other, the second method to find out what the genotype of this flower is, is to cross it with itself. And that's what basically what Mendel did to make sure that he had true beauties in the beginning. We never really talked about this on our first cross video. But the uh, what if you can't do that? Remember, you can only do self-pollination in flowers which have both genders in it. What if you have an animal or an organism that can't have sex with itself? What do you do then? That's the problem, you know. If you can't have sex with yourself, then you won't be able to make that. So, you have to do a test cross. What do you do? You get this plant, right, and cross it with the homozygous recessive, just like you see in the board. I don't know what the big P, this red, the purple flower is, but I know this one is little p, little p. So, um, what happens is that if it, she is a big P, big P, what I'm actually doing is this. I am doing, an F, uh, basically, can you identify this cross? When you do big P, big P versus little P, little P? Well, you're going to be doing a true uh, uh, parental cross. This is a P cross. And in a P cross, everybody looks hybrid. So if you cross these two plants, and 100% of the time you get a hybrid, that means that that plant, the, the purple, must have been homozygous dominant. However, if it was homozygous recessive, what are you crossing? You're crossing a big P, little P, with a little P, little P. So you're doing this cross instead, which is the F2 test cross. And in that case, you're going to get a 50-50 ratio, which matches the ratios of the parents like I just talked about. So, you see, you can use what is called a test cross to help determine the unknown genotype of something that looks dominant. It looks dominant. You can't tell what the genotype is. But there's three things you can do. You can do genetic analysis. You can do a self-cross, which you can only do if you have the uh, ability to self-pollinate. And you're not going to be able to do a, a genetic uh, testing if you don't have the equipment. So the other option is to cross one flower with another flower that you know to be recessive. And if you always get one look, that means that the flower was homozygous dominant. But if you have two looks showing up, it means that you had a heterozygous flower. And that's what a test cross is all about. Now, uh, another thing that we can do now that we've explored all of the Mendelian crosses is actually understand where Mendel started or how, why is it that because you do a self-pollination, you always end up getting true breeders after a while. Now, basically, if you get a flower that's like this, big R, big R, and you cross it with itself, you're always going to make itself because this only has homozygous dominant and so therefore it only has those genes to give. Meanwhile, if you get a flower that's little r, little r, it also looks recessive. And it, well, it looks recessive, and in this case, it also only has the genes to give, which are like itself. So it's always going to make itself. And so this is a true breeder cross. And when you, and if, when you self pollinate something that happens to be a true breeder, you're always going to make that happen. Now, what if you get a flower like this, big r, little r? The one that has both genes and it's a hybrid. Well, that is basically an F1 cross. And an F1 cross kind of looks like this. And in an F1 cross, you're always going to get one out of four, which are little r, little r. Now, if that happens, you know you got the true beauty that you wanted to make. Because little r, little r will look recessive. And there's only one way to look like that, which is when you have the paired recessive genes. You know, almost like recessive. So, you know, you're back to where, what you want and you made a true beauty. You're also going to make a true beauty right here. You're going to get a big r, big r. And so two out of the four children of the F1 cross are going to be true breeders. The only problem, of course, is that these guys, big R, little r, are also going to look dominant. So you can't really tell the difference between the true breeder that you want and the little, big R, little r's. So you do have to do an extra step and do either a test cross or then get these children and cross them with it themselves to keep, make sure that they are true breeders. Well, if you cross them with themselves and you accidentally get the big R, little r, you're just basically back where you started with the, doing the F1 cross, and you again going to get a two and a four chance of getting the true beauties that you want. But if you get the big R, big R and cross it with itself, you're going to be doing that, and you know that you basically got the true beauty that you wanted. So that means that self pollination always is going to make you get the true beauties that you want, either because you're crossing something that's already a true beauty with itself. Or because you're crossing a hybrid, and two out of the four chances are that you're going to make a hybrid. So in half the time, sorry, a true breeder. So half the time you end up making this true breeder. And uh, if you do this many, many times over and over again, you end up getting uh, 
true breeders and making sure that that's what you got. And so that's what Mendel did to find the true breeders. On the next video, we're going to talk about how he put all of this together and to figure out the solution for the mysterious problems with the flowers that we talked about a few videos back. So I'll see you then.